Hi folks, welcome to First Order Logic, or FOL. This is the full major logical system that the whole quarter has been building up to. What I want to do is see if you can, if you've learned the basics so far. So pause your videos and decide which of these translations of Pia and Quinn are happy are correct in FOL. In first order logic, there's not one single way to translate things. Sometimes you'll have an important choice. So I want you to tell me which of these are acceptable choices and which are incorrect. Okay, that was your last chance to pause your videos. There's one that is preferred here, and that's the one that's shown in red. H uh, is for happy and little p is for Pia and little q is for Quinn. So this is the best translation. There's one other one that's acceptable and that is P and Q. We can still use sentence letters. Now, if you're already using P for Pia is guilty, that wouldn't work. But if you're not using that uh, P for Pia is guilty, then you could use it for Pia is happy. So this is the sort of old version and that's still acceptable. None of these other ones is workable though. So let's talk about how the basics of FOL function so that you can understand why that's so. Well, in first order logic, uh, just the language alone is much more complicated. Remember, we used to be able to fit on a single slide our whole logical systems. And now all we can do is fit the language of FOL on one slide. What we've done is we've added several more components to our language. We've added terms, we've added predicates, and we're now adding another kind of symbol called quantifiers. Quantifiers are like connectives. They allow us to make complex sentences. We're, I'm gonna talk about those in another video. In this video, what I wanna focus on is the new ways to make atomic sentences in FOL. And the way that we do that is by using predicates of either properties or relations, and also combining them with constants, which are also known as names. Let's start with names. Which of these do you think are names in FOL? So I wanna see if you've gleaned the basic concept for names. So pause your videos and tell me which of these do you think would work? Okay, last chance to pause your videos. There's two good answers here. If names have to be written in all lowercase, just like all terms. So if you're using an alphabetical character in a name, it has to be lowercase. But you can also use numerical characters in names. So the number one counts as a name, zero, one, two, three, all the natural numbers we're gonna use as acceptable names in two. Uh, acceptable names as well. Uh, just like in mathematics, this symbol, this character, the numeral one is in a sense a name uh, that refers to the number one, we're gonna do the same thing in our logical system because we're going to want to be able to formalize uh, the basic theorems and prove a lot of theorems of mathematics. What you cannot do in names is have uppercase letters. So this Pia works as a name in English, but not in FOL. Same, even you can't even have uppercase letters buried in names. So this is not acceptable. Um, there's, this is an uppercase letter. Now, the other important thing is we're gonna reserve the end of the alphabet for variables. So X, Y, and Z are gonna be variables, not names. But just like names, variables also have to be written in lowercase. So lowercase Z would be a variable, but not Y. So all terms in FOL have to be written in lowercase. So names in FOL function just like names in English. Uh, we have the name Pia, that's just like a tag or a uh, way to refer to that person. Well, the lowercase p is gonna be a way to refer to them because uh, in order to count as an acceptable name, it just has to be written in all lowercase letters. So a single letter p works or you can write out the name Pia. So we're gonna call these the short form and long form. If you wanna symbolize Saint Nick, just make sure you don't capitalize the N and that's fine. And th the use of numerals uh, is exactly like English. So there's pretty much nothing to learn there. Besides names, there's also predicates. This is a new important category, uh, linguistic category in FOL. What predicates are like, are they like the verb phrases? You know, names are like the nouns in English and predicates are like the verbs. They are the properties of things. Like when I say Pia is happy, the predicate there is being happy or is happy. And notice predicates always have a gap. There's, a, there's an empty spot in the predicate where you can insert stuff. What do you insert in the gaps of predicates? You insert names. So that's how I would say something like P is happy. The way that we write predicates to symbolize that gap is we always have parentheses after a predicate. Every predicate must have parentheses after it. And when you put the little, you know, the gap in the parentheses, we're gonna call that an argument place. That's the dot, 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 this little ellipsis where things go. Now, if a predicate just has one argument place, it's called a property, like being happy is a property of Pia. But if you have two dot, dot, dots, two argument places, it's called a relation. Because when we say Quinn knows Joe, there's a relationship between Quinn and Joe, such that the first thing knows the second thing. So uh, in, when we put that into FOL, you just need a comma 
between the names. So we're going to have multiple argument places separated by commas. Relations can be two-place relations, binary relations, or they can be three-place relations, four-place relations, etc. So notice that if, if we need a three-place relation, we just have to have a couple of commas, and we're going to have all the argument places there that we need. Remember, like all of uh, the systems that we learn, bool and prop and FOL, there's never a space in any of these strings of symbols. So don't put a space between the commas, don't put a space between the parentheses or anything. It's all straight strings of symbols. Now, there's one very special predicate, and that is the identity predicate. Since it takes two argument places, since it has two argument places, it's a binary relation is what type of predicate it is. All the predicates that we use in FOL made up of like letters like nose or happy or through, they all go before the argument places. This is called prefix form where we put them before that. There's also a possibility of writing the predicate in between them. That's called infix notation. And that's the way the identity predicate works. Just like you would say P is P, P equals P or Pia is Pia or one equals one or one plus one equals two. You're used to using the binary predicate uh, for identity in fix already. This is the way you use it in your everyday lives in, in math that you learned in elementary school. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. Think of the identity symbol as a special symbol in FOL now, just like it's a special symbol in mathematics. We're gonna carry that over as an important binary predicate. So when you look, for example, at this explanation of the language in FOL, we're gonna have like standard relations. You can make up any relation you want with these with the alphabetical letters, uh, but we're also gonna have the identity predicate as an important relation here. Furthermore, the key thing about predicates that helps us distinguish them from names is they will always be written with uppercase letters. Notice that likes is capitalized and happy is capitalized. You can even just have the, have the capital letter H. That's an acceptable uh, way to write happy. So that would just be the, the short form for happy. You can, you know, I guess if you wanna shout your predicates, you can write like happy in all uppercases. That's fine too. The only requirement is predicates always have to start with a capital letter and names can never have any capital letters. And this allows us really easily to just tell at a glance what counts as a, as a predicate or a name. Now, how do we make atomic sentences? Well, there's really two recipes for it. We're gonna, just so everything you've already learned in the class is still relevant, we're gonna keep these sentence letters. So you can use P for P is happy. Or sometimes actually what I'll do is I'll use these uppercase sentence letters just for some random atomic sentence where it doesn't matter what the exact content of it is. But when we wanna look at the specific sentential structure of the thing, we wanna know exactly what the sentence is saying, whether it's a property or a relation, we are then gonna write out the predicates and the names. And so the second way to make an atomic sentence is just take any predicate and insert the right number of names in the argument places. Like if it's a unary predicate, if it's a one place predicate, i.e. a property, you just need one name. So happy Pia just says Pia is happy or HP says P is H. Normally, you know, if, if your audience knows how you're interpreting this, then that would also say P is happy. Or likes PQ, this would say P likes Q. And of course, this mixed hybrid form is also perfectly acceptable. You don't have to go all long form with names and predicates or all short form. This is also perfectly fine. Um, A equals P. What this is saying is A and P are both names for the exact same object. Um, it's like P has two names. P goes by A and by P. And of course, uh, you can also make atomic sentences with our names uh, for numbers. So the numeral two, remember, is a type of name in our language for two. And so this would count as a sentence. Of course, this is a true sentence. This is a logically true sentence from the uh, meaning of identity. So now you can see why these are the only two acceptable answers and why red is the preferred one. So generally speaking, we're going to require you to formalize to bring out as much logical structure as possible in the way that you formalize sentences. And this brings out the fact that H, that there's a common predicate, that, that P and Quinn share a property, the H property, the H predicate. And see, if you symbolize this as P and Q with, atomic, with, with, with regular atomic sentence letters, you don't see, you lose that logical structure. We, now that we're going to FOL beyond Boole and Prop, we're gonna be able to study deeper logic, logic that matters at the sub level. And that's why you wanna translate this like the one in red. But that's not to say that we're ditching sentence letters. So that's why this is the other acceptable one. So both of these are technically obey the main rules of our system. All the other ones violate some rule. For example, the, the conjunction um, symbol, 
Conjunction is still a sentential connective. It can only connect whole sentences. You're not allowed to connect names with conjunction, so that doesn't work. So that's, this is wrong for the same reason. Plus, you're not allowed to capitalize names either. So P and Q can't be capitalized there. That's the problem with this one down here, the fourth one. Pia cannot be capitalized in FOL, nor can Quinn. Names have to be written in all lowercase. And of course, this one has capitalization errors and it gets the things backwards. The predicate doesn't go in the parentheses, the, the names are supposed to. Okay, let's, let's do a tiny bit more practice before we go. Pause your videos here and see if you understand the semantics of how names work. How do names grab onto objects? How do we use names to refer to objects? So pause your videos and see which one of these is problematic. Okay, that was your chance to pause your videos. Some of these are perfectly fine. Can one object have two names? You bet. Remember Pia equals A. I can have the name A refer to Pia and I can have the lowercase letters Pia refer to Pia. So an object can have two names, no problem. Um, what you cannot have is a name with no object. So B is the thing that's not possible in our system. You might be wondering why that's so. And that's because our system is gonna preserve bivalence. Bivalence gives logical systems a lot of power. It is incredibly important. But if, what if we had a name that didn't refer to an object, like Pia doesn't refer to anything? Then how would the sentence happy Pia be interpreted? Is this thing true or false? We, it, who knows, because this doesn't, this doesn't grab an object and it either has or lacks the property of being happy. So we could have failures of bivalence if we allowed names to not have objects. So every name must refer to some object or other. Now, that does not mean every object needs a name. So this does not go in the other direction. You have to really keep this clear in your head. It's okay to have objects with no names. You don't have to name every blade of grass in your yard in order to make logical inferences. That would be absurd, ridiculous. So not everything needs a name, but a name does need an object, and that's because bivalence. If we had objects with no names, bivalence would never be threatened. So names can have one object. You can have objects with multiple names, um, but what you cannot also have, you cannot have one name refer to multiple objects. That's um, uh, additionally problematic. That creates failures of bivalence as well, because if P referred to two different people, and I said P is happy, you wouldn't know if I said something true or false unless I specified. So I need to be talking about Pia 1 or Pia 2. When we formalize those, we need to give them different names in FOL so that we have unambiguous truth values for every sentence of our language. Okay, let's, let's do one more practice. Pause your videos and see if you can answer this. So if you understood my rules for making atomic sentences, tell me which of these count as atomic sentences. Okay, last chance to pause your videos. Um, three of these are good. This first one is not an atomic sentence because this says like is a father and, and we can say P is a father or A is a father, but we can't put a sentence in here. P equals A is itself an atomic sentence and that doesn't, and we can't put atomic sentences in the argument places of predicates. This is like saying P is A is a father. That's not grammatically well formed. We can say P is happy or P is happy. That works. Now look at this one. P equals Q negated. This is a perfectly well-formed sentence, but it's not atomic. This is a complex sentence because it has a connective on it. So remember, complex sentences are great. There's nothing wrong with this as a sentence. It's just not an atomic sentence because it has a complexity. This is like a molecule. It's got some additional structure from that true functional connective. One equals one. This is a perfectly good atomic sentence. This just says one is the same as one. Uh, that's a truth of mathematics and a truth of logic. Um, this says Quinn is a father. That's perfectly good because we have capitalization right. This is lowercase and F is uppercase. The problem with the next one is this F needs to be uppercase. So that's not an atomic sentence. The problem with the last one, X is a term. This is all, this is, this is not ungrammatical in some sense because we put a term in the argument place, but variables do not make for atomic sentences. And I'll tell you why, and we're gonna treat variables in the next video because they're, they're a whole issue of themselves. The key thing to remember at this point is, in order to make an atomic sentence, you must put names in these things. If you put variables in it, you don't get an atomic sentence, you get something else. Um, so we'll talk about that um, elsewhere, thanks.